Welcome to the Intoxicated Podcast, a weekly comedy talk show that dives into the personal lives of comedians, experts, and creators. I'm your host, Sarah McClellan, a very amateur stand-up comedian and self-proclaimed sad girl. It's the comedy podcast with a lot of heart. Feel hard and talk hard. This is the Intoxicated Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Intoxicated Podcast. We are here on a Tuesday night with producer Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, Sarah. How are you, Sarah? I'm great, Sarah. Thank you for asking, Sarah. Oh, my God. We are so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too annoying for you guys that we yes. have the same name. Sorry. But there's not really a nickname for Sarah. I'll change my name in for your eyes' convenience. What would you change it to? Leela. Oh, What? <laughs> Leela? You you had that like ready to go. Like you've been thinking about that. I know. I was like my whole life I've always wanted to be a Leela or Marissa. I think it'd be a good Marissa. <gasps> oh, Marissa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or just like Nicole. Okay. Because that's N- my middle name. I could see you so, as Nicole. But I'd go by Nikki if I wasn't Nicole. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Well, you are Sarah and I'm Sarah and we are here on the Intoxicate Podcast and you and I, well, we, you, you've come off of two shows in a row. You did uh, Sunday Sillies, and we both did Gus's last night, which was really, really fun. Yes, both shows are really fun. I love the shoe shop because it's such a good show. Yeah. And, like, Ian is an amazing host, and I just always have fun on that stage. Shout so. out Ian Black, Sunday Sillies at Economy Shoe Shop in the basement of the shoe. Not the main Economy Shoe Shop, the you basement. There. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and we did Gus's last night. It was my first mic in two weeks, um, so I was feeling rusty and like just like nervous because i had all this new material number one you did great because you you did great on sunday you You did great on sunday and then you you kept the momentum up and you did it again on the monday it was hard because like it was a small crowd at gus's so like i did leave out a part on purpose just because i'm like this you're not gonna laugh at that you're not laughing like you know what they were such a good crowd though they were a good crowd yeah but i just did the parts that i knew that they would laugh at right and I feel just kind of went yeah. with it you did a good job too though oh my gosh so i was in such a state before going up i I always do the thing where i go to that hallway by the bathrooms right before i go up um like when the person ahead of me is up and uh scott met me there i was just like not not really in the mood just because i hadn't done it in so long and um scott like pumped me up like he was like my my coach like he like shook me a bit like literally was just like come on come on like like get excited get, and i, was just I like, okay. really like scott what a great man shout out to scott <laughs> who closed out the show but the funny thing that happened was Martin normally kind of chit chats a bit before bringing me up. And then this time he started to bring me up right away. And this woman started talking to me and Scott uh, in the hallway as this was happening. She was just like, you look like you're getting in the way of her being in the zone. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like he's he's helping me. And she's like, but you look like you were in the zone. And I was just like, she just kept saying in the zone, like you're in the zone. I don't want him to mess up your zone. And I was just like, no, 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 he's helping. It's okay. I don't want him to mess up your zone. Come on. And like the whole time Martin's like in the process of starting to talk about me. And I'm like looking at my phone, trying to find the voice recorder app, which I normally have ready to go. Like right before I go up to press record. And I just couldn't find it. I also like couldn't find my timer. So as Martin's bringing me up, I'm like walking up there trying to find these apps on my phone. And then I get up there and I just go. (laughs) But my favorite thing about that, you're like, but then you went to like set mode. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, everybody. (laughs) Totally unfazed. Just. Right? You would never know all that shit just happened to you. It was just so funny because I literally audibly into the mic went, Ugh. <laughs> and then I actually went in to have a good, decent set. So, so you never know what's going to happen at Gus's Pub on a Monday night. You're never n- going to know what's going to happen, but it was like a really fun little show and nice to just like 
bring out some new jokes and like just see how people it sucks that i didn't get to record it because now i have to like try to remember what landed and what didn't but you know that's the name of the game yeah um but you guys we do have a listener voicemail i don't know if we should have like a voicemail sting or like a little song or something that we play when we have a voicemail. Here is the voicemail that we have for you today. There you go. <laughs> oh, I really like that. I, um, so. I just keep always think of Sarah Silverman. Uh, her podcast has the perfect voicemail jingle. It goes like this. You left me a message. Now I'm playing it for the world. <laughs> Here comes a voicemail. And like, it's just, it's the oh, best. That's, that's beautiful. It's the best jingle. Maybe we could like find someone on Fiverr to make us a jingle. That'd be great. Like a, like just someone who's like relatively inexpensive. Mm. Be like, can you make us a, I think we need a voicemail jingle and we need a pee break jingle. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So it. we have a voicemail and I know who this person is, but I got to say, that he left his name as the cashier you called out for working at Walmart one time. <laughs> Story behind this. I had always seen this person at Walmart and he was always very nice to me and just like an awesome person. And then one night I saw him at Gus's and I said, oh my gosh, you're the guy who works at Walmart. Because that's the context of how I knew him. Which makes sense, yeah. And so, and I'm like, oh, I hope you're not upset that I said that you work at Walmart. Like, I love Walmart. Walmart is Robert's literally, jam. literally go there constantly. But I love this person, and um, we have a message from them. So let's hear it. Hey, ladies, a question. What is your guys' favorite ice cream to eat when you're having a really, really bad day? For me, it's Moomus, but yeah, Moomus all the way, baby. Anyways. And thank you so much for featuring this question. Have a great day. All right. So in case you didn't hear that, it was, what's your favorite kind of ice cream to eat when you're having a really bad day? Just the hard hitting questions on this podcast. What the people want to know. The shit that matters. This is the shit that matters. But I mean, yeah. it is a good question because it's self-soothing. So when you're when you're having a bad day, you need something to self-soothe. It's a self-care. lot of people do ice cream. Yeah. What is your favorite ice cream to eat when you're having a bad day? Ben and Jerry's half bake. Oh dang! What's in half baked? It is cookie dough and fudge and what was that first word? <laughs> cookie dough. <laughs> What's that? Cookie dough. <gasps> cookie dough. I don't know if you said that right. I think you said cookie dough. <laughs> like it was like a Mexican <laughs> cookie dough. <laughs> cookie dough. <laughs> Sarah has sunstroke because she <laughs> was literally at the beach all day. I'm today. okay. I think my brain's just a little bit. Fried. Her brain's okay. a little fried. So from- cookie dough. <laughs> okay, cookie dough and cookie fudge. dough and fudge, and it's like half vanilla ice cream and half chocolate ice cream. So you literally mm. get the best of, best of both worlds. And there's like chocolate chips in it, and yeah, that sounds delicious. Got a hot take. I'm not huge into ice cream, and by that I mean it's not my go-to comfort food. I'm a salty bitch. Oh, so you go for chips? Chips, popcorn, you know, just straight up salt. Like <laughs> <laughs> a handful of salt. There we yeah. go. That, that should do it. But when the mood strikes, there's a couple ice creams that I love. I love a mint chip, mint chocolate chip. Mm. I love mint chocolate chip. Classic. It is like refreshing and I fucking love it. Gotta say, also just love normal vanilla i know that's a boring answer i I do like a vanilla but my favorite ice cream well there's two actually i love a dipped cone Mm. like a vanilla dipped cone with like chocolate hard chocolate yeah but my favorite sundae to get from dairy queen is a hot fudge sundae nay 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 it's no no ordinary hot fudge sundae you ask them to add marshmallow sauce to it oh and add peanuts. Okay, that's bitch. a game changer. So this, my mom put me onto this. She said that when she was growing up, it was called a Jack and Jill Sunday. Oh. Um, and yeah, marshmallow sauce and hot fudge. And the marshmallow sauce is like hot. And they don't really add, put it on the menu as that they have it, but they have it. That's good to know. It's like a secret menu 
fucking from hack. Uh, DQ. DQ. Oh man. Jack and Jill. So hot fudge and marshmallow and vanilla. I'm just gonna go in and ask for Jack and Jill and see what they give me. Mm hmm. That sounds amazing. But honestly, in terms of like ice cream that I just bought, like, I don't buy a lot of ice cream. Hmm. I I do. I feel like I disappointed <laughs> Connor with that answer. No, I think Connor will appreciate your opinion. I just named him. That is Connor. Thank you, <laughs> Connor, for that voicemail. Hopefully you don't mind that I I, I named you uh, because you are far more than a cash girl at Walmart. You are a dear friend and awesome supporter of the podcast. So thank you so much for sending in your question. But you guys, we have a new episode this week. Oh, yeah. Vote for me in the coast. <laughs> For best comedian in Halifax. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to tell them what to do. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm just going to state a fact. I'm nominated for best comedian in the coast best of. Do I think that I'm the best? Hell no. I think you're Do the I best. think I deserve to win? Hell no. Um, but, you know, just putting it out there that I am nominated for the coast best of best comedian. Anyway. Um, but going back to it. This week's guest. Oh my goodness gracious. What a guest this was. What a talented man. This week's guest is the amazing comedian, Justin Shaw. So we just got done with the Halifax Fringe Festival and Justin had a show in it called Midnight Baby. And this was his one hour of stand up, all about his life. It was truly like so so spectacular to see i was telling sarah like it's it's literally i think every comic's dream to have a set like this that is essentially a story of your life in joke form um and it was just awesome so i asked him to be on the show and got to know him a bit and like he is just oh he's what a gem so sweet and so freaking smart yeah God so smart him. so enlightened enlightened yes enlightened that's, that's a good word yeah you guys, this guy, this guy's in therapy. This guy's done therapy. What's that like? Right? God I damn. Know. So he is initially from PEI, but he has been living in Hamilton. And this was his first time actually doing stand-up in Halifax. So um, he hit up all the mics when he was here. And he hit up Intoxicated, which is what you should do when you visit Halifax. Mm -hmm. um, but I just had like such a great chat with him. I was really like surprised at like how open he was about you know, yeah. more serious mental health subjects. Um, I will say there is a moment in this podcast where we do touch on talking about suicidal thoughts and we're not necessarily talking about suicide more. So I guess how to deal with someone who's going through those things. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just be, be prepared for that. I will leave a timestamp in the description. If you're someone who is sensitive to hearing about that type of thing. One thing I loved about this episode is that we touched on manifesting. Oh, yeah. Remember that part? Yeah. And it's interesting because last night we had another harvest full moon and your girl had another moon bath and lit some resentments on fire. Um, oh, yeah. Love that for you. Right? But Justin has a really realistic re approach to this, like where he does say like, how important it is to like combine that with hard work and like actually doing things and putting yourself out there and uh and going for what you want in life which is so inspiring so like i think he has like i i would call it like he has a really realistic approach yeah to manifesting because it, stuff doesn't fall into your lap that's not how it works that's right. The universe does put you like on the right path to like get to what you want, but you have to put in most of the footwork to do it. That's right. Love that. Love that so much. Honestly, um, Justin is incredibly smart, incredibly talented. And one of my favorite things, um, two favorite things from this episode was him talking about his partnership with his fiance, which is incredibly healthy and amazing and adorable but the other thing that i loved about this one was um when we were talking about mental health stuff um he you know i said something like uh how do you feel about talking about these heavier more darker subjects and justin made a really good point saying that like we shouldn't use those words to describe talking about depression which i was like that's a great point justin that's amazing because there's so much stigma around mental health still exactly and like having depression it feels bad but it's not dark 
it's not dark <laughs> and we shouldn't be putting it on that so uh this was just a freaking lovely conversation make sure to follow justin on social media so he is on instagram at wrath underscore of underscore shaw i'll make sure that there's a link to that just stay tuned for like what he's doing because he's doing amazing stuff and please go see him live if you have the chance to do so yeah so follow justin and make sure to follow intoxicated on social media facebook and instagram at intoxicated podcast please send in your voicemails your questions you can do that through the link in the description of this podcast to leave a voicemail or you can email intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com do please leave us a rating or review on apple Podcasts. it really helps the show out subscribe to the youtube channel tell your friends about the podcast and honestly guys that's about it we're gonna get to this awesome episode with justin shaw to the validation of others so i think really it's just more of like um more of your framing and your mindset of it like i really have to put on um uh like a work cap when i do it you know what i mean yes. i'm just like it's still me but i'm just like all right like this isn't for me this is for the quote business and that people probably want to see that i do more than just stand up maybe they want like Who's Justin? Do you know what I mean? Who's just tuning in? Like, well, this is my wife. Like, and she's awesome. This is my dog, and she's pretty cool, too. And I like to draw. I haven't shared any drawings in a while, which Ooh. I should. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's music. Kind of... I love music. Like, I, like I, Do you, you play? No, I just, I'm a record collector, and I'm like, I, I enjoy shitty 2000s indie acoustic rock and uh I'm name cool. me some of oh, your faves oh fuck i don't know i've been replaying neutral milk hotel for like a no while no idea what that is neutral that, milk hotel i don't know who they are are you kidding but, but i'm going rest assured i'm looking them up after oh this. my god are rest we recording we're this, recording this this is we're officially on oh, this man. is the cold open into justin's episode god neutral. listen to neutral milk hotel <laughs> God, what, what? I'm glad that was candid. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> what, who I are, love that album. Who are these people? They're a band. I, like, Canadian they're, band? No, they're American. <laughs> Nothing against Canadian artists, but Neutral Milk Hotel. Give me a break. God. In an airplane over the sea. It's beautiful. Well, it's a beautiful see, album. But now... I know that you're like, oh, why don't you know them? But now I'm going to go discover them. Yeah. And you just probably created a new fan. I mean, like, they're they're great. Like, I don't know if they, like, not to say you're not a valid fan. They have a lot of fans. Like, ah, come on. That's so, oh, wait, who else? Name some other names. Who else? Oh, Jesus. What about, like, some more, I hate saying this word, but, like, more popular ones. More popular that ones? That I might know. Uh-oh. I mean, in mid-2000s, like, 2009 to 2000, like, 13 i got big into east coast music like east coast like local like kind of maze yeah Plaska? yeah adam baldwin yeah i know yeah i'm trying to get out adam baldwin on the show actually oh nice yeah that'd be you. i, I would fucking guys. like to have adam baldwin and matt mays together on a podcast oh man shoot the shit like we, i would fucking love that uh i'm friends with the s lead singer from two hours traffic <gasps> holy shit yeah. that's so crazy because this is insane the way the universe works a couple days ago and this was before i even saw your show and yeah. knew that you were from pi i don't know where i thought you were from okay. i think i must have assumed ontario i didn't realize you had pi i'm based in ontario but i'm from pi yeah. got you um i literally had them pop into my brain randomly oh awesome because that song uh limelight yeah okay yeah. that was like way back i was it limelight I leave me alone the, yeah, it's, not the Shazam it, but yeah. Yeah, it's uh like they came into my brain and I was like, where are those what's what are those guys doing? Are they still kicking around? No, they broke up. Oh, They're uh shit. I think the uh, the guitar <laughs> player, I think he's in always, uh with uh with Molly Rankin and okay. uh, and Liam, the lead singer who I who I know from uh, 
Uh, we just kind of knew each other from around Charlottetown, and uh, he was on my podcast like a year and a half ago, and uh, been good ever since. It's just kind of funny because like we, I went to a show in Charlottetown this past uh, past June, and it was just like an open mic, just like getting ready to go on. He comes in to pick up his dinner from uh, uh, the the restaurant that's downstairs. You had to pick it up in the the pickup spot up uh, up at the club. Just because there's less people in the comedy yeah. club, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah social yeah. distancing. He comes up and I'm like, "Hey, Liam," and he's like, "Hey, man, we just caught up." And then uh, he left, and then my fiance texted me, being like, uh, "How's the show?" And I was like, oh, "I just hung out with the lead singer from Two Hours Traffic." And ten years ago, my little brain would have been like, "Ah," but now I'm just like, "Ah, oh, you're you're the dude." You Isn't know? <laughs> that so funny? I actually saw someone post. Uh, on Instagram, like a clip, yeah. it was Heidi Brander with Twenty Two Minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. She she posted a, a story of Our Lady Peace singing "Clumsy." Yeah. And I go, what? Where where are they at? They were in Truro yesterday. Yeah. And like, I didn't even number one, I didn't even know. Number two, I used to be the hugest OLP fan. Thank like, I, you. I would have fangirled uh, the fuck out and been like, I'm there, I'm front row. And it's like now I'm just like, oh, they were in Truro. My fiance <laughs> does not like. Our Lady Peace, and I will gladly throw that. Why? Under the bus. Does she have reasons? Uh, she went. Um, oh, I don't know where she, it was in Hamilton. She went to high school. She lived in Georgia for a while, but I think when she moved back, the song "Starseed" was, which you, is one of their best. I love. Uh, they used to play music in between periods in their school what? and uh like they'd play it like to to cue you to like all right get to class like if you hear the music it's time to go and the cue music was starseed <laughs> which is like bizarre because i feel like one it's got that <laughs> like really yeah. cool intro and then it hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's just like what the heck? like do you really want a bunch of hormonal teens just like hyped up and it's also a Calculus, let's get it. <laughs> like, Jesus, <laughs> it's also a really long song. Yeah, it's uh, what is it like five minutes or so? Yeah, I mean, I think it might even be long. Let's actually see. Yeah, I'm check it. it We're gonna Google Starseed. We're googling. I'm glad to. This is probably like one of the few. Well, Diana also is like very patient with me in Neutral Milk Hotel. Oops. Oh, oh, we're gonna get sued. Oh, it's only four minutes. Oh, what am I thinking? I, I must know. be thinking of like maybe like the live. Oh, maybe. I feel like I feel like they did a live version of that, and they like just went yeah. on like they just extended it. So she, but it was amazing. So she's just kind of like uh, it's just like it's not. She doesn't find it like sonically pleasing to the ear. But she's a very musical person. She's she plays the flute. She's uh, uh, she's a singer and just not her not her bag. She's very classy with her with her music. Classy tape. lady loves classical music. Uh. Really, uh, yeah, I love her, but she's really patient with me and Neutral Milk Hotel and Our Lady Peace. And I'm glad we could bring that up here today. That's, woo. I often wonder about like partnerships and, yeah. and like if things like similar music taste, you know, stuff like that matters. Cause like I'm a big fan of the movie High Fidelity. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Where like the main guy is like, you know, these things, they fucking matter. The, yeah. the, the albums that you like and like yeah. all of this. I mean, and I often wonder that cause I'm like, I mean, like, you want to be able to go to shows with someone. I, I, what I liked, um, what I like about her is, um, one, she's, she's got a broad knowledge of like classical music, jazz as well. She's got me into jazz. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that, uh, that I got to show her and there's just stuff that I, I really care about. And she's like, Oh, this is really cool. Like I really love, and she's in a, in a, in a two piece band. Uh, they like, they, they don't do stuff right now, just pandemic stuff. But, um, like I pitched some stuff to her and I was like, your voice would be great for this. And they put it in their mix, like just to like play at clubs and shit. And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, like really weird deep cuts, like uh, uh, brand new key, like okay. this song from the '60s. Don't know that one. Listeners, look up brand, brand new, new key. key. I got a brand new pair of roller skates. You got a brand new key. Oh, that's, uh, that's I like cute. That. Yeah. Um. So so I'm um, a, a cool thing about the relationship is um, we have very different backgrounds, very different like kind of upbringings. Um. Um. So she didn't even watch The Simpsons like growing up. So I'm like, yo, <laughs> like, is she same age, younger, older? Uh, she is about five years older than me. So she's 35. 
Yes, oh, we've just my. aged my partner. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sure. And I know that mid thirties is such a triggering age for us women because, like, I, I I feel like I feel like you age, said it, not me. It's a trigger. It is, but I also am just like, oh, one of us. Like every time, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, it's so weird the difference between like thirty two and thirty four. As soon as I meet someone else who's thirty four, I'm like. Stick with me. Let's yeah, yeah. talk. Let's bond. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because we're one year away from when we're told we're too <laughs> old to have kids. Thirty-five is geriatric. Yes, of course. According to uh, according to research, apparently. right? Research. But, but um, what's been cool is uh, I've gotten to show her like a lot of uh, stuff with like TV and and music that I'm that I'm really into. Like nothing that's like so important. That's like a like the relationship hinges on this like right if she doesn't like a certain episode of the simpsons i'm not gonna lose my mind over it i care more about her than her tastes like oh, if I that makes that. sense and she in turn like she was always um she's very put together very um cares about herself in a sense that um it's like of course we should have nice things like not like luxurious things but like take care of yourself make yourself a good meal make sure you get yourself a good night rest Get up not 10 minutes before your work shift. Like, get up like an hour and a half before. Yes. Be awake and be present. She's so present with people. And That's wonderful. People love her. And I'm like, what are you doing with me? Like, I'm <laughs> kind of blows my mind. But you're, but you're getting there. Yeah. I, I do think that the self-care thing comes... Yeah, 30 it'll start cuz yeah. you, you mentioned before your your body's starting to hurt. Yeah. Uh, so your that will even just get worse. Just get ready for it. I'm ready. Um <laughs> and then you'll soon realize like, "Oh yeah, like sleep. I recently just slept for 8 hours for the first time in months." And I was like, "I can see the world in color now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like getting 4 to 5 isn't great for you? Shocking. Who would have thought? Who would have but, um, fucking thought? So with her, it's been it's been really nice in um, uh, the domesticity, I guess. I, I guess it is. It's not something I, I expected, but like there's a point but a year and a half into our relationship. Um, a friend of ours got um, for her birthday uh, a photo shoot for our dog, like got us a gift certificate I with a photographer. That. And we're like, and I was like. Oh, and then I'm like, who am I? Like, I used to live in a bed and breakfast <laughs> in Montreal, paying like dirt rent, eating like a raccoon. And then we got the photos and they let us be in the photo. And like, we're with our dog by a white picket fence. And I'm like, who's this guy? Like, but you love it. I love it because I'm happy. And you're, oh, see, yeah, that's I'm just I'm so it. happy. Like, once you're happy and you like, you're less ashamed, you're like, like my life has just evolved and yeah. I'm okay with it because I'm happy. And it also makes me like own up to shit. I'm yeah. just like stuff that I'm not proud of, stuff I'm not happy with about myself that I've experienced. I'm just like, yeah, that happened and it, and it sucked and uh, I'm working through it, but, um, I don't know. It's just easy. It, I don't. I, I was about to say it's easier to be open. Easier said than done, right? Easier said but than like, done. if you can just kind of open yourself and be like, "Yeah, this is who I am." Yeah, it takes courage, but it, it, I, I'm very lucky in that I've got a a strong champion in my corner that's just oh. like, "No, you deserve to be you," oh and that's God. awesome. So. Big shout out for love. Big uh, shout out for love Diana, for Justin, because not me, but for him. I love you, Die. <laughs> We're gonna listen to Our Lady Peace on our wedding day. Oh my God, are you are you gonna you gotta? What's do you have a first hand song yet? Uh oh, actually, uh, you'll dig this. We've we've got roles in the wedding of things that we that we need to look after. Um, I think love she's that. she's covering. Uh, her dress i think i think that's like her Can you like I, she didn't i mean like, like am i gonna be in charge of that i'm just trying to think does she have like what else is she involved in the wedding like in the planning and she's like great at like list making like very like way to get this done this done this done and i'm like let me worry about the music and um i've uh, i got a friend on the island who's like our friend um and she plays guitar and she's a lovely singer and oh, i was i was trying to figure out i'm like how do i get you in the wedding or you should be in my my party because she's like a lifelong friend and then I was like, oh, what if you sang at the wedding? Absolutely. Like, what if you played uh, the Down the Aisle song? Ceremony. The, uh, so I I think we have three songs confirmed that, that, I, that I'd like her to play. The Down the Aisle song, the first dance song, but then the first dance into the everybody. Yes, get on yes, the floor. yes. The more lively so, one. Yeah. Uh, we, we have ideas, but it has to be a secret. 
Uh, she's not. Uh, I'm like, let that. Be oh my... yeah, that yeah. You can't say it on the podcast because yeah. then she might. Okay, tell me after though. We're not rolling. Sure. I mean, I reserve the right to change my mind. You do. (laughs) I should introduce our fantastic guest before I loved I love cold opens because I'm like, this is the conversation, everybody. Welcome. But uh, I am gonna give him an amazing introduction because oof, what a talent here with me today. Oh go on. Uh, this week's guest is stand-up comedian. He is somebody who has been touring all around the Maritimes recently. Uh, he just did yuck yucks as well, and he is coming off of seven shows seven shows seven shows of his one man spectacular comedy show midnight baby mm-hmm. it's justin shaw hello internet hi we're on the podcast the podcast is started we this did is the it battle cry of the podcast the ding bell dong. has rung ding dong we're in it welcome hey thanks for having me oh my god thanks for being here this is so exciting so you've been in halifax for about a week? Uh, two weeks, two actually. Weeks. Two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. while. I've been here for two weeks. The, today is my last full day in the province of Nova Scotia. How have you been finding it? Yo, you see, are you yeah. are you tired? I'm so tired. I was gonna say, <laughs> like, because I booked you, and I was like, I hope he doesn't feel obligated to do this. But like, also, I'd love to have you. But I'm like, as long as it works for you, because you're doing like an insane amount of shows yeah. and. Oof, I'm I so can't tired. imagine. Oh my god. Uh, it's it's been fantastic. This is my first time performing in Halifax, which kind of kind of blows some people's minds. Maybe not. That's kind of an exaggeration. It's like, what? It's not that big a deal. But uh, I, it, it's strange because I, I grew up in PEI and I, I started in PEI and then I moved to Montreal and then Alberta, then Ontario, and I've been like ev- like the mainland, but I've missed the rest of the Maritimes, and that's, that's so just funny. yeah, it's just kind of strange. So when uh, when I was uh, uh, able to present at the Fringe with uh, with Midnight Baby, I wanted to fill out the rest of my calendar with like uh, what other mics are, are around. I'd love yeah. to just work out some other stuff, and yo, like everybody was just so on board and they're like, yeah, oh yeah, we'll get you on this. We'll get you on this. Do you want to close this show? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I'll take that. Sure. Yes, please. So it was, it was great. And I was expecting just to like work out, um, uh, midnight baby for an upcoming recording I'm doing at the end of the year. Like I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll work the flow of this, see what works, see what I need to switch, what I need to punch up, yeah. what I need to tighten. Um, I was just like, oh, yeah, seven, seven will be good and it'll be chill. Seven turned into 16 mics. And that's cool. Like, I mean, welcome to Halifax. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> like, I mean, Toronto, like you can run around like you can do like secret shows uh, and yeah. uh, get get on like lots of stage time. But this like a chance to perform for 16 audiences not just like a room of other comics waiting right. to go up but like audiences actual people who aren't comics in the crowd yeah mm-hmm. and just rooms that are just so appreciative i'm just like holy cow like it's uh you made me feel like a rock star Aww. and rock stars a lot maybe a little prince uh <laughs> a little prince, a little prince. I don't know you went up but you went down in height yeah. you're like like a step up from rock stars prince no. but make him little i'm a neutral milk hotel kind of rock star <gasps> neutral milk like i feel like i need to tag them in this podcast yeah. by the amount that you're talking about yeah they're gonna be like why are they why are they talking about us but but anyway it's it, 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 it's been great uh, i've been hanging out with a lot of a lot of really cool people yes. um and they've been uh, really supportive of me, trying to get the word out for my my solo show that I've been working on, and uh, yeah, and uh, uh, got my share of stories from uh, from hanging out with people. It's been a it's been a really oh, fun time. Smokes. And I saw the show on Friday, and what a spectacular show! Thank you. Like truly, like I was just like watching you, and I was just going like, this is every comic's goal to get to a point where they could do an hour of material. Oh, wow. and and I didn't see a notebook, I didn't see notes, nothing. And maybe that's just because like I'm a dumb open micer right now, and I'm oh. like, oh my notebook, I always need my notebook, <laughs> my glasses, <laughs> my glasses. <laughs> uh, but like I was just so impressed with yeah, just the flow of it, and like just the idea of like having material that represents your life so like magically i know that's cheesy to say yeah but like your material is so nostalgic oh thank you and <laughs> it really oh, i just loved it you Thank just, you it was it was really really good well, you I should pre- be very proud i really appreciate that 
It's very, very kind praise. Um, yes. But um, yeah, the the journey in putting this together, a lot of my material before, I guess before the pandemic was just uh, it's like, OK, I just need jokes. Like, what's funny? Yes. You know, like, what do I need to say to make people laugh? And then when uh, we got dumped by Earth, uh, this March 2020. I love the way that you say that. Dumped yeah. by Earth. Oh God, it's uh, we're still reeling from it. We're still calling them up at 2 a.m. <laughs> I don't even like you. <laughs> hey, you miss me? I'm gonna hang out after. If you want to come over, just knock. Um, oh my God, you're so right. But um, when it, when the world kind of shut down, I just started writing in a in a journal, and I just kept. Uh, Kind of opening up my thoughts that I haven't uh, necessarily shared on stage before. Um, I've never talked about uh, my relationships on stage before. I was like, oh, I don't want to be a relationship comic. But now I'm just like, oh, I should just be myself on stage. Like be who I want to be. Like be the person I want to be on stage. Just be that person. And it's taken a lot of writing, but a big, big inspiration for that has been... Um, uh, Mike Birbiglia is one of my. I saw that. You were, yeah. on that, were you on that podcast? I was on his. Uh, he did Working It Out online comedy. It was like a Zoom show that he did. Oh, cool. Um, and um, they had a call for. Do you know the slow round? Have you listened to his podcast before? I, I've listened to a couple episodes, like when people I knew that were on, yeah. but I haven't listened regularly, but like, I should. Uh, We've we've been back and forth on Twitter before, which is kind of cool. Like I wrote a review of his podcast and was saying uh, it, it, this this episode with Ira Glass, it's like such a, a a magnificent lens into crafting a premise. Like actually, how does your writing serve the premise? Like how like oh. you, you can have a great story, yeah. but if the story isn't serving like the point of what you're driving home, what are you doing? And yeah. just someone to come at mike with that just like wow okay Shit. you're being like it needs work <laughs> and i was like this is amazing uh unreal but like they get on they're great like collaborators so it's like it's like all constructive feedback i listened to it and i wrote a review just saying this is like when you go out on halloween and a house gives you a full-size candy bar and you're yes! like um do they uh, do like, i really get this this is they, for me are they for real yeah uh and then uh like, okay, just keep walking. Just keep walking. Run. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, but then uh, I tweeted that, and he shared it, saying, this is the best review of the podcast I've ever Stop. heard. It's the full-size candy bar of podcasts. And um, uh, another comic, James Mullinger, he... Oh, James. James. Is he on I, the show? I produce his podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I work at a podcast production company, and I'm his producer. Oh, that's sweet. James is a gem. He's the boy. He's yeah. uh, He's been a good, good, good dude for me, too. Like, big, big like mentor in a way just like coaching yeah. like just always listening to my constant emails being like man i don't know what do you think and he's just like just keep by it mate and i'm like oh, that's ah, fine. he's such a positive he really is my favorite thing about james and hopefully this isn't too much information into my professional work but like just almost every single email he signs off with happy days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a, yeah, i just hear, take it. i just hear it in james's voice he's that's just awesome. such a such a positive dude i love it and he uh uh, we were chatting. I was just like, "Yeah, Mike liked my review," and he's like, "Oh, I gotta introduce you." And he sent me sent an oh, email stop. and like kind of just like put us on a thread together. And I'm like, "I'm chatting with Mike Burbig Leo. No fine. big deal. No bigs. Uh, no Burbigs." Uh, and then um, <laughs> he um, he put out a call for his online show, saying, "Hey, we're looking for submissions for the slow round, which is uh, the opposite of the speed round. You know, uh, we have a guest okay. come on and uh, we talk about." A thing that happened in your life and this this topic was uh what's a memory that plays in a continuous loop in your brain for no reason and um i i was just sitting as i was like scrolling and i saw it and i was like oh uh and i messaged his producer not him like just to uh i shared the story uh played on a loop and uh didn't hear back for like two weeks because it wasn't for the show wasn't for a while yet um i hear back like the wednesday before the weekend uh, I think it was like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday type deal. So the day before the weekend um, saying, hey, we need you to check your Internet. You've been shortlisted for the thing. Um, let us know like what your Internet capacity is because it's on Zoom. We'd love to have you on. But uh, we're still like narrowing down the, the choices. And I'm like, uh, OK. So I did their like little Internet test and Speed I, test, yeah. I, pa I have Internet. <laughs> I uh, love that. I, I love that. Like, the Internet test. If you have shitty Internet, you're out. Yeah. yeah. You, to, listeners, the key to being a good comic, you need good <laughs> bandwidth. Like, Truly, now 
nowadays. You need, you need more gear. Uh, <laughs> That's true. But um, but I did. Uh, uh, I submitted it and didn't hear back until Saturday night. They're like, "Yeah, we're, we'd love to have you on the the last show on Sunday. Uh, l- let us know." And I was like, "Absolutely, I'm in." Uh, do I need to buy a ticket or is there a link? Nothing back. Heard nothing back, and uh, immediately I'm like, "It's not gonna happen." Like I'm done. Oh, like yeah. it's not gonna happen. I'm yeah, like yeah. pacing the apartment with Diana. It's like that's it. It's oh, not happening. I hate it, that. It's not Wait, happening. Well, you're, you're well. You you go into coping a coping response because yep. you're like, oh yeah, I'm done, and I have to emotionally prepare for this exactly. rejection now. It, prepare yeah. for rejection. That's yeah. a title of the every comic's life story. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Um, you already rejected yourself yeah, before exactly. anyone could re- accept exactly. you. <laughs> um, so I did uh did the processing of grief, and uh, the next day at like. 5 p.m. They're like, oh, sorry, we missed this email. Yeah, here's the link. Uh, you're up oh at like, be ready for seven for a sound or mic check. Uh, we'll Shit. have you on. I'm like, So they okay. told you the day of. Oh, yeah. I was just like, okay, that's fine. And so I, I went on. I shared my little story. And I was just like, oh. And he's like, and you're a comic too, hey? And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> Were they taking non-comics? Uh, yeah, it's like really? anyone who wants to submit a story, like, really? uh, like it's just a storyteller. And like, I think they do like a mix of like, all right, like you're a goofy guy. You're a, uh, you're just kind of a person, no, a pedestrian, <laughs> a normie, a human, a I, normie. Call them no- I call them normies. Yes. Pedestrian is such a condescending term <laughs> and I regret it. But anyway, they, um, they had me on. It was, it was cool. I got my people had their eyes on my work for a little bit oh and, gosh. uh, I'm sure he loves that I. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I was on Mike for Big Show. I got to share a story. And he's like, take, uh, take a seat. It was a Zoom show for him though. He's Mike. He doesn't give a shit. Like he's right. Like, he's he's gonna tour the world again once it opens up. Me, I'm just like, oh yeah, I had my one moment in the sun. I'll take it. So anyone who's knocking on Zoom comedy. It's Don't. good when it's good. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it would give you the chance to potentially collaborate with, like, people you look up to. Yeah, absolutely. Which is wild. And just a chance, like, really, like, it's not something that is going to be, like, on a, I don't think it'll be, like, on a tour poster of mine. Like, once no. appeared on a Zoom show with his favorite comic. I right. don't I don't know if I'd put it on there. But really, it just was um, an example of, and I'm going to get a little ooga booga. Love this. But when you really want something and don't second guess what you want when you care enough about something and you put it out there into the universe sometimes things have a way of working themselves out and that takes a lot of faith and a lot of vulnerability and sometimes when you put yourself on a limb like that you fall flat on your face and that sucks and it's especially with comics as i'm sure you're aware like it's like oh look at him he's trying <laughs> he wants things he wants to be happy get a clue be miserable like the rest of us starving artist complex yeah and Which, i'm just yeah. like there's no sense in making a martyr of yourself and suffering for your art like i think yeah. that's the silliest thing like <sighs> just, you're going to that's that means i agree good <laughs> I'm just like, what's the sense? Like, oh, I want to be the brooding artist. No, I want to be Bugs Bunny. Like, screw that. Like, <laughs> you have to suffer for your art. I'm like, yo, pick a card, any card. Like, I'll play a game. I'd rather play than d- dive into this illusion that you have to be, like, angry and upset, like, at the Depressed, universe for yeah. not giving you something. Put yourself out there. It's terrifying, but if you can put yourself at the mercy of the unknown, sometimes if you give a piece of yourself to the universe you get a piece back that's a quote from my fiance i love that yeah so so does this mean do you kind of then believe in manifestation or a form of it because i feel like i feel like manifestation gets a a bad yeah it does because people associate it with like cheesy affirmations that you say in the mirror to yourself but like you mentioned journaling that's something i've started doing recently too just the idea of like each day writing down well number one like three things you're grateful for every day but also uh goals keeping your goals in mind and like living with purpose every day i think is something a lot of people don't do i i i believe in it in the sense of like yeah, I believe in it, but I also believe you have to work. That's <laughs> you right. Know, like, That's the, exactly. You can't just sit around and think good thoughts. I, just, yeah. I looked in the mirror all day, <laughs> and I'm not on JFL yet. What the freak? But I told myself I was beautiful, <laughs> and I'm still not a supermodel. Shit. 
<laughs> so you gotta like do stuff too but i mean like i think it's easy to get caught up in just doing stuff and like going kind of going through the motions of just like i'm working yeah but let yourself want things let yourself oh my God, I dare that. to dream man like why not because even if you don't get it at least you're working towards something and where that takes you is who knows that could take you somewhere cool that's fascinating and like your point about the work like i do think work ethic and drive yeah. is something that you have to work on every single day you have to you have yeah. to have that drive every day i feel like there's a lot of people who i've heard say i want to do this i want to do that and i'll do it eventually yeah and it's yeah. just like do something to get there even if it's a small thing every yeah. day do something like, do something every day and as writers like i think of, like I think of myself more as a writer now than I think I ever have as a comic just because like they kind of turned for me uh, during the pandemic. I was, I was doing more writing than I've ever been. Uh, like at first I was just like, Oh, I can just go be funny on stage. Now actually like I'm like learning like, Oh, write Every day. Right. And if you want to do it, if you want to be, if this is the work you want to do, the easiest thing that you always, always have at your disposal is a pen and paper, That's your right. phone, something, or even voice to text. Just yeah. like talk. Voice memos. Yeah. yeah, just like get it out of you and do it once a day. Pick time like in the day just to do it and write about whatever. Like I yeah. I used to do it in the morning. Sometimes I would do it before bed. Like usually I just pick a memory, like something like what's something that crossed my mind today that I kind of went, oh, I haven't thought about that in a while and just write to that. I, I'm not right. writing. I'm not writing for an audience. I'm writing just to get it out, like kind of to entertain myself in some way. And sometimes uh, 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 something comes out of it. Like um, in Midnight Baby, I talk about uh, my dog. Yeah. What's the name again? Uh, my dog. Yeah. Uh, my dog in Hamilton, like uh, with, Di with Diana, our dog's name's Phoebe. Phoebe, there it is. Yeah. Oh, and... I had some stuff written about that, like kind of writing about how I was feeling about the surgery. And I realized the connection for me was it's the first time I've ever had a dog that needed surgery is because I grew up on a farm and we never <laughs> yes, had right. that before. Right. Like they've never needed surgery before. Well, they probably needed it, but they never, but got they were it. like, suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, live it off. And that's kind of been my life too. <laughs> See, and that's another thing. Just speaking to that, I didn't even think of that tag before. It's like, you got to li live it off. Life is your Write it surgery. down, Justin. Don't <laughs> writing, forget it. Don't forget it. it. I truly think you, you make such a great point about the writing thing. Yeah. And every single day doing that, I've al already started to see the benefits of journaling. Um, And like every, yeah, there's a lot of people, even if it's not a premise or a joke with a punch, if you just write it down, you can always go back to it later. It's yeah. so important. I feel like all good comics probably write every day or if not every yeah, day something very regularly you know yeah and i know seinfeld he's got the uh oh yeah of, like, he writes write every day. day like write a joke every day i don't know if i'm quite that crisp of just like it's a it's a well well told joke every day i'm just like okay that's that's, that's a bit much i'm just like i'll write something like just kind of open my heart onto a page for for a little bit every day as best as i can i mean yeah. This has been a hard trip, like, because I've just been going up. Um, I find it challenging, I think, in stuff like this where it's just so concentrated and I'm, like, having to sell myself as well, like, selling shows, selling tickets, and um, and still doing other mics outside of the festival to make yeah. time to just, like, <laughs> what's a new bit I can do, <laughs> you know? Right. So that's, uh, that's kind of challenging. So just kind of working that into the routine is... Uh, it's hard, but sometimes it's good to, I know I said write every day. It's also good to just like know when you need to look after yourself and making Gosh. yourself part of the work, like know what you need to do to kind of, re you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup again. I know oh, that's booga booga. everything you're saying, I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. Just because I think a lot of people forget that. I like, I, I struggled with like, oh, I, I I'm not inspired to write jokes. Oh, because I'm not living life right yeah. now. I'm actually just, all yeah. I'm doing is all I'm doing is uh, like, I have jokes. I guess I started last year. My jokes last year that I started with were, from experiences years ago. Yeah. And I don't even relate to those jokes anymore. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, 
I don't seem to have any friends anymore. I'm not dating. I don't have time to date because I'm always at Mike's. And then like, I'm just like, I actually have to make a, an effort to go and live. No, yeah. I can't right now. Cause I need to, I actually need to live to make the art that I want to make. Yeah. And, and the thing people say about a lot of my stuff is that it's, um, uh, very relatable. Mm. I and mean, people say it's relatable. Absolutely it is. Yeah. And that's just cause I'm, I'm personal. Like I write about myself and it's not, yeah at the risk of being indulgent, obviously, but like I, I, I explore stuff that happened to me and I go, this happened to me. Is that, did anyone else like kind of feel that way? Like not yeah. everybody grew up on a farm in rural PEI, but they have a sense of what that means and how does that relate to them? Like how right. do I build that connection with an audience? And I try my best to cont contextualize yes. my experiences to make it, uh, make it universal. I believe yeah. the personal unlocks universal and that being said there are some fan fucking tastic comics that are so good at like they're not talking about themselves they have like an That's act right. built up nick nemeroff i haven't seen him yet live Yo. but i've heard like i've seen great things i like, follow him and stuff yeah him and chris Locke. i would argue chris Locke. ah oh! Chris Locke. I'd argue those I two are Locke. like two of the best working comics. In oh Canada my god, I pissed right my pants when I saw Chris. Like I truly Legends. had to pee. So I was like, hard. you're not gonna get like Nick and Chris if you Talk get them on the show <laughs> being like, open up about your heart, oh, man. Oh, that's the thing. That's the thing. If I had uh, if I had Chris Locke on the show, it would be a, it would be an hour long bit. Like yeah. for sure, it would not be. I think you talk about the universe. Like uh, <laughs> it'd be awesome, but that's just an example. Like. That's just, just what works for me. I could never be like a, a one line, like really subversive and yeah. uh, interesting comic like Nick or someone who's just like got this like absurd imagination like like Chris. But that's them. That's them. And that's they, they, they do they them are. really well. Exactly. And you do you really well. And yeah, I'm just trying to be the best me I can be rather than try to put a square peg into a round hole. And because there was a time early on uh when i was doing comedy I, I i did a lot of a lot of mics in montreal um 2014 to 17 when i was in school and um i was i i'd see all these other comics and i'd be like oh cool they're like also kind of like mid-level open mic guys like just working and i'm like oh i see that's how you do it i trying to be more like them yeah. and act like them and that's that's a dangerous trap they're yep. a good good example of like work rate like they're kind of stepping into their own step into your own not theirs that's right yeah. be yourself getting the bells yeah oh my god so many bells already I feel like i'm winning the podcast <laughs> I do have a like a dark question to ask you. You've been doing this eight years, yep. and I, from what I can tell, have truly developed like a very like you've found a voice in yourself, in, to, yeah. in your comedy. I think I feel like all the comics are always striving for that and getting that to be better. But uh, I feel like you're you're very if you're not there, you're damn close. Somewhere near, uh, like hoping you're centering <laughs> the bullseye. I don't know if I'm right on you're it. You're like but you're I'm like, in the inner uh, circle. I'm like that's a good shot, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's. Good shot. Um, have you wanted to quit at all over the eight years that you've been doing? Yes. Okay. How many, uh, like a lot? Um, I think one day in particular that I knew I was like ready to go. Oh, Sarah, uh, put some dramatic music over this. Okay. Some ominous. Uh, I want to hear something. It's 2014. No, <laughs> 2015. Yeah, 2015. I'm living in Fort McMurray, Alberta. I'm desperate for comedy because i was living there uh in the summer months you know where you spend your summers in fort mcmurray alberta uh great great tourism <laughs> bitch uh <laughs> screw the beach you want to go to the oil sands uh but i went there to work and pay off school in montreal i was going back and forth between there because um school is expensive because i couldn't work full time like or part even part time while in school so i'd go to fort mac and and save some money uh but I told myself, it's like, if I go back, I want to do as many mics as I can. There's not exactly a mic scene, or there wasn't at the time, um, do comedy there. So I was like, beg, steal, barter, borrow time as best as I can. There was a um, an event at the mall, the Peter Pond Mall, uh, for Canada Day. And I 
was uh people knew me as like i was trying to get some comedy going they're like oh you're that you're the comedian that's running around i'm like that's me <laughs> running around uh, i'm proud proud of that title and they're like well we're doing a variety show here in uh here in the mall of canada today oh great uh, at, at, at 1 p.m and uh uh we'd love it we'd love if uh we could have you on uh we can't pay you and i'm of like not. okay uh <laughs> That seems fair. Uh, <laughs> Stage time. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the <laughs> show. I, I, I show up and um, it's in a mall, which is already <laughs> rough on Canada Day in Fort McMurray. <laughs> um, there's no stage. It's oh, at the, the base of the escalators, like, oh, right, like as people are getting off. Um, before me was a group of like Ukrainian dancers. And oh my god! They there's like a, a a troop of them. I don't know what the group of Ukrainian dancers is called. A troop? A trap? I don't know. A trap? A, a von trap? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so they're dancing and they've got like all this flourishy thing, and I'm like in jeans and a a, a, a white shirt. Uh, I look like I work at the mall. <laughs> uh, and so they go. They're like, all right, we just had the Ukrainian dancers. You're on before. Um, uh, the belly dancers and i'm like are you kidding me Stop like it. i'm in between like a beautiful cultural display with music and movement and you're just gonna have me go up and tell jokes and they're like yeah and well, how long and how far in comedy were you at this point year, year okay. and a half uh brand new baby yeah oh yeah uh fresh fresh face comedy and so i and they oh there's no host Oh, great. There's like, there's no host. You just go up right after they and just, say, <laughs> they just said, yeah, yeah, just go up on stage and just start talking. And there's no fixed seating. People are just walking by. And what the hell? It's like the commons, but in a mall. Yeah, exactly. And no one's like, no one's bringing a chair with them. So <laughs> this experience, uh, even if there was a host, I'm not sure what they would say. Like, all right, we had some meaningful cultural displays here, folks. Now, stop whatever you're doing and give it up for some guy. guy. This guy in a white t-shirt. You've never met. <laughs> and uh, I did uh, I did a tight three minutes of... Uh, Amazing. Uh, How's it going, Marvin Murray? <laughs> yeah. Like, food court. Let's hear from the food court. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it from Foot Locker. Yeah. Mall crowd Let, work. Let's hear it from Claire's. Oh my god. Silence. Okay. You just hear you just hear the sound of the, the piercing yeah. gun <laughs> going into like a teen girl's ear. Security comes by. It's like we need backup. Uh, <laughs> did it. Um very odd. Very odd experience. Did they laugh? Uh they reacted. They were, They just went, yeah, and then they just didn't listen. There's just like right. no one there, and I just felt like a crazy person talking. I think I did like one premise, and it was oh uh, a. It, it so was funny. it was a joke about um, uh, my dad was a carpenter, and he would always make stuff. And when I was a kid, I'd want like a lot of toys, and my mom was like, "Oh, your father could probably make it," and I'm like, "What? <laughs> you think dad can make an iPod Nano? Like, <laughs> are you kidding me?" So like, and so I'm stuck with like. <laughs> It's like, oh, happy birthday, son. Oh, a hope chest. Great. <laughs> Great. I can put all my toys that I don't have into it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Not a bad joke, I guess, now that I say it. But uh, interesting thing, uh, I, I, I tried to do something at, uh, a little while ago where I'd read old jokes from my old joke book. I love that. And, and be like, oh, check out how bad this is. And I pitched it to someone. It's like, isn't that stupid? And he goes, actually, that's like not bad. Like, that's a good joke. I think you were just a bad comic. <laughs> or maybe like maybe the idea behind the joke was good, but yeah. it just needs to be written better. Oh, it's just like I just wasn't <laughs> smart enough on stage. I didn't know what the hell I was doing like a year in. Like, there's yeah. a good bones to it. Like, I think there were some other shitty tags that like I – it's like, you know, like just repeating stuff for no reason. Yeah. Like, you know, dads, right? Dads, <laughs> right? Oh, man. Anyways, just like <laughs> talking at nothing. Um, so anyway, yeah, just uh, that was my worst gig. And ever. so like, did you have that crushing, like, I'm done with this um, feeling afterwards? Yeah, it was just kind of like, uh, like I left being like, well, l luckily no one knows who I am. This is, That's a, right. this is a chance I could leave uh, and just and just quit. But um, there was my first professional gig in 2016. 
Uh, I was at Comedy Works in Montreal. I won an open mic contest where um, if you keep coming up, coming to their open mic, and if the audience, the audience would vote their top two favorites of the night. If you win three times, like a top spot, you get to open for like a weekend spot, like proper. Oh, nice. And uh, I was opening for Andrew Barr nice. and Christoph Davidson. And I, the th- it was Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Thursday, it was weird. Everyone agreed it was weird. I was like, Thursdays are always weird. Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, okay. It's them. It's, it's it's the crowd. First Friday, it's kind of awkward. I was just like, oh, okay. Uh, hmm. That was, that's probably them again. And then the th- ah! the second Friday night, the girl I liked was in the audience. Oh, my God. I Shit. performed, and it was so bad. It was oh, the first time no. I felt like, a sweat like drip down into a sweat that merged with a single tear on stage. Stop. But because there were no laughs is if, if you do a set with no laughs, sometimes that clips a bit quicker. Hey, and uh, the anxiety makes you oh, okay. Go a bit quicker. I you just, fin- oh, you move on to I the next. Yeah. Finished before the light <laughs> and the the booker who's like running the tech he wasn't near the computer the host wasn't even ready for you shit so and this is like rodney ramsey was hosting (laughs) and i'm like oh no and so i'm done and i can tell they're also done and i'm like all right that was me folks usually there's a host do, do they lie with that at least no they didn't no they're just like cross-armed like it was a bunch of like late 40 year old Fuck. Fredericton people who came out for their night and they didn't want some 23 year old smart ass on stage. So they're mad. I'm here. There's usually a host and they usually play some music. <laughs> so, um, rock, 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 rock and roll high school. Stop. Ro- Did you sing? It? I sang rock and roll high school. And, uh, it was really awkward. Then oh. Rodney comes back. Like, he's like, oh, <laughs> runs. Give it up for Justin. <laughs> 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 Didn't see the whole act. Like, wasn't that great, he folks? thought he was out. And I'm like, oh, no. I should quit. And then, <laughs> then the booker, I still have the Saturday. And he's like, whatever that was, you can't do that again. And I'm like, oh, you're right. God. So I came in, whole new set for the two Saturday shows. Is the bluest I ever worked because I just needed to get a rise. Like I needed a reaction from them, and I just I realized then and there, working in front of a an open mic crowd that might love you, that they're they come on a Monday or a Tuesday, and it's a free show, mm-hmm. versus <laughs> a Friday Saturday club. We're playing like we're paying money. We hired a babysitter. Like we step it up, you know. Different ball game. Yeah, and so Oof. looking back, like. Um, that was rough. That was like rock bottom. I felt like I saw a car crash. Um, but oh, then man. Yuck Yucks this past weekend like went so great. Like it was just like everything landing. Like anytime I do well on a weekend now, I think back to that experience where I'm like Aww. never again. <laughs> right, and you're like, look, I didn't I didn't quit and here yeah. I am. Yeah, so I'm glad I I'm glad I worked through that. Thank you for letting me kind of No, I love that. this. Yeah. Well, because like I'm a new comic and I I had a, I I like that you said that you did a whole new set, and made up for it that weekend that you. Well, I mean like like, was, like you had enough material yeah. to change it up. I had like That's backlog. Fascinating. I had a backlog of material and I just went for stuff that I'm like, all right, they might like this, like based on that. I uh, just kind of punched up some stuff. It was like really like stupid and crass i was just like no but i like yeah but you but and and then you did better right oh yeah like oh my god exponentially better like they're just like i got like grown like oh this guy but at least it was something something for them like the the next comics to like capitalize off of rather than the host having to like double down and like dig deep and do more work enough to be like okay i see why he's here in the spot you know and um yeah, it was like I think the joke it was so dumb. Uh, Hulk Hogan had just been busted by Gawker, and um, he was like being racist on a sex tape. And uh, I, I was like, oh yeah, like if nothing else, they'll think it's funny. I'm talking about that, and they were like, fine, I'll take this. 
the joke was um like i don't want to think of hulk hogan naked he looks like if someone tried to reassemble the pieces of chicken from a bucket of kfc <laughs> um it's just a stupid joke um, yeah then i talked about celebrity sex tapes and it was just like see I, not that, stuff see, i really talk about a lot yeah. that's fascinating to me yeah that you said that you went a little more dirty yeah because for me as a female comic i like i went i i had my first club guest spot and i went i opened dirty and i'll be honest 95 percent of my material right now is dirty yeah yeah i just it's just but again that's me taking a break and learning yeah, how sure. to write new jokes um sure. but it was fascinating because they did not like the dirty like my yeah. club experience was the opposite yeah where the second night i had to really cushion the dirty stuff with like my not so dirty stuff but even the not so dirty stuff was still dirty yeah but i did do slightly better as long as i cushioned it yeah so that's fascinating to me i'm not saying it went great i'm just but saying it went, it went better. better exactly club club crowds are so you don't you truly don't realize until you do it yeah. how challenging it is compared to like like you said an open mic where people might be drunk like yeah. they're just there to have fun and, like they're just a lot easier to please. I was I I realized than a club. yeah I realized after that weekend just how full of shit I am. You know what I mean? It really just, humbles like, you, eh? Yeah. It I really really like, humbles you. And I yeah I just had to kind of give my head, head a shake after that and realize that okay I'm not king shit. Like I'm not. I might be good at open mics. That doesn't. You're you can be still funny. It just doesn't mean like uh, you can work any room. And I think Jason Allen is a comic in Hamilton. I really like. Uh, I've heard of this guy. I yeah, think Jason Allen. Him, Check him out. He's, okay. he's great. Um, I was chatting with him a while ago, and he said like one of my goals as a comic is to be able to walk into any room and be able to connect with any room. That's no matter, right. No matter the day of the week, no matter the kind of room, like just to be able to connect through comedy. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that's the goal. That's really admirable. Like that's <sighs> like that's awesome that's yeah uh, so that's kind of where i'm headed to i'm trying to anyway i actually forgot we have segments to get to oh yeah, yeah i bit but this flows nicely into the the first segment which is my assumptions segment don't punch me in the face ow so i kind of overshared a lot here no i sure. love this yeah it's only fueling my assumptions um, I had two main ones just based on like my brief interactions with you and also just like creeping you online. Okay. The first one, and we kind of touched on that already, was that you have a healthy relationship with social media. Yeah. Um, I mean, we kind of do dove into that a bit. Right. So you don't, you don't like it, but you're, you're, you do it. Yeah. That's kind of where you're at with that, right? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I kind of got to put on a work hat when I'm doing it. I'm just like, all right, well, got to sell the show. So try to do it in a non-annoying way as possible. Uh, just, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't put a lot of material on online just because, uh, I don't know. I feel like once it's out there, it's just like, oh, come see me do this joke that you've just heard. Right. You know, like, um, I try to save clips for, unless it's like something like really like authentic to like a certain night where it's that's like, it like a crowd work went really well or something and yeah or the, just something came up that uh, i may not necessarily do again but i'm not gonna put like my closer like or online, or like, like yeah exactly i think that there's definitely an art to it yeah. i've noticed that too a lot of comics that like in halifax have been posting more clips which is great I yeah think. yeah get, 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 get it out there but yeah a lot of it is those little moments in between jokes yeah. where you might have an interaction with a crowd, someone in the crowd or like stuff like that, I think is yeah, definitely yeah, really good to put like on. Yeah, like video footage of like what you look and what you sound like on stage and proof that you can get laughs. I'm like, That's yeah, right. totally get that up there. Like give them a sense of you without yeah. necessarily giving away the whole, uh, the whole thing. Um, so I guess just, yeah, just being selective about it of just like what kind of stuff do you want to share? Like what's, what stuff do you want to give away for free? You That's know right. What I mean, uh, but at the same time, it's like, hey, who gives a shit? At least they liked it, and then they can come back and like see it. Like, God forbid they want to come see it. And oh, then, yeah. yeah, you know, frig, buy yeah. a ticket, yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, are you someone who's on social media a lot? Are you someone who do you find yourself addicted yeah, to your phone? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely on my phone a lot. It's just, um, I don't know. It's, it, it, I'm sick. Like, it's, uh, yeah. I gotta this need to like constantly kind of check my phone. Uh, mm -hmm. one thing I do though, is, um, when I'm with Diana and we walk the dog, I leave my phone home. That's uh, so good. And it's, 
I have to be make an active choice to be present, and that's yes. it's important. It's it's kind of shitty that this is like kind of what my relationship to social media has come down to is that's what I need to do uh, in order to set those boundaries. Um, but yeah, um, I I'm on it a fair bit. I don't like I don't like it at all. Like I, it's nice that I can keep in touch with my family, I guess, and, and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. It's just it's tricky. I, I get I get tired of selling myself. It just feels like such a one dimension. Like I I try to present like a three dimensional side of me, but I'm just like, why do we always need to be performing? It's oh. such a performance all the time. Yeah. Why do we need an audience? everywhere i just want it on stage i don't want to be on stage all the time and then there's a vicious cycle because in order to get those audience members you need to like promote <laughs> yourself so but but then how much do you promote and then like where is that line yeah. and it's so tricky and pres- least- like yeah the, the, sorry to interrupt yeah um, the last two weeks I- excluded like i've been like pretty hard like kind of pushing myself like hey i'm in halifax come see me do this that's like, right trying to build my relationship with the city but normally like when i'm not on tour like i try to make a balance of like sharing something i'm interested in sharing something that's a yeah. part of my life something that's not just just in the comic right i'm also just in the husband just in the dog owner just in the big yeah. fan of neutral milk hotel and starseed by, Star by our lady Feast. by our lady feast it's right <laughs> so like yeah try not to be super basic about it or like bo burnham's got the song white women of instagram yes, uh, yes! I, that killed me uh so i don't know just trying to be like authentic and a, a person a human. yeah a person. exactly so <clears throat> thank you for uh, no. saying it's a healthy i i, I think it appears to be healthy and it appears to be authentic and it doesn't seem because my other assumption um was that you're a very humble person oh thank you does that is that something i i feel like you are i check myself a lot uh i got a lot of friends who keep me really down to earth and uh keep uh keep the old ego in check Ooh. Uh, you know, like uh it not, i like i don't get too 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 much i think diana probably gets full brunt of it the most of just like okay buddy like you did good you know you had a good night like let's let's chill you're not like a genius here like uh, oh do you over celebrate sometimes oh just on the drive home (laughs) oh really (laughs) just like yeah yeah that went that's it that went well right like (laughs) it's not just me like that went okay she's like yes (laughs) like it's fine like just be just chill um but uh, yeah, no. When I'm when I'm with people, I try not to talk about myself too too much and sell like be too proud of my own work, kind of kind of deal. Like um, there's a story, Derek Delgadio. Um, he's a great storyteller. Um, he was telling a story about learning how to play cards and how to deal cards, and um, um, the, he went to this dealer who was like, uh, "Oh, you uh, you deal, do you?" like a like a card card player um it's like let's let me see you cut the deck he goes huh, okay watch this and he's like checking out his handwork and like how he's like moving the cards he's being very swift very cool and uh, just as he goes to lay the cards down he looks up and he's pointing a gun at him and no so way he, he took learned... his eyes off the so while you can be busy admiring your own work you don't know what's happening right in front of you. Oh, damn. So that's, that's like, give me chills. Yeah, that's something I live by now. I'm like, don't sit back admiring your own work too much. Just keep an eye on the big picture. The people who check the stock market every day are the most miserable people, miserable people in the world. And I think a lot of people check their own stock market. Social media. So, like, yeah. don't live by likes. Like, don't. It's not worth it. Like, God. Keep your eye on the bigger picture. Like, keep the. It's good to know what's in front of you, but like, you know, just like have some perspective. Man, oh man, that hits hits hard. Yeah, yeah. that hits real hard. It's a good. He's a good storyteller. I tell you. I need to hear that right now. I I just truly think workaholism and getting obsessed with like your work can yeah, be yeah. so dangerous. Yeah. And it's like I had a dark thought recently where it was like, I'm sure you know, like, uh, Andrew Andrew Albert passed away. Yeah. And, like, that was a big, big hit. I didn't know him that well, unfortunately. Yeah. But, I like, the interactions I've had with him have been positive. But, like, I noticed, you know, when someone who's really loved passes away, you know, it's just people are coming forward with, like, pictures of them together and stories and shit. And I had this dark moment where I just went, I feel like my life is getting away from me. And yeah. I feel like if I were to die 
people aren't going to have stories about me, Sarah. Like they They're might really have, you. they yeah. might have like, oh, we, I did mics with her or like yeah, I did her yeah, podcast, yeah. but like it wouldn't be like, we had this weekend where, and yeah, it, it yeah. truly, I hate saying that like it, it, it made me think because I wasn't that close to Andrew, but it made me look at my life and go, what yeah. really matters? Like, yes, I think it's important to pursue your career or do things you're passionate about. But like at the end of the day, have friendships, Real. have connections, like be present in like everyday moments yeah. so that when you die, people can remember those no, things. Yeah. When Andrew died, no one, <sighs> uh, Fuck. the stories they shared, no one mentioned his credits. That's right. They told stories about him. They spoke from the heart about him. And what sucks is most people, when they say, uh, when you're on your deathbed, no one wishes they spent more time at the office. That's but right. there's definitely some comics that are that, like, that are like, I, I should have done, done more, more shows. <laughs> but that's uh, the thing. so dangerous, I think. Mm -hmm. This hustle culture is going to kill yeah. some people. And a uh, side story about Andrew. Please do. Um, he got me my first gig at Yuck Yucks. Stop it. And See, this is what I keep yeah. hearing about him—that he was so supportive of yeah. newer, newer yeah. comics. Like I was, uh, I was living in in Fort McMurray, um, and um, they just opened like a, a yuck yuck, similar to, maybe not similar to how, yeah, no, it's similar how they have it here in Halifax, where it's uh, it's in a, a room that already does comedy, and uh, uh, yuck yucks comes through and does the weekends. But they pass through. They have a, a headliner coming in. I saw Andrew was on a poster. Um, and I knew him from Montreal. Like we did some mics together, and we we're like friends on Facebook. And I was like, "Hey, man, I just moved here, and I'm like dying. Like I need some <laughs> stage time. Yeah. Uh, and I'd I'd love to open for you at Yox if if I can. And he's like, totally. And it was my first time playing that venue too, like that like bar. And so it not only ingratiated me with um, uh, the person who formerly was booking um, Yuck Yucks out there. Um, it got me in with the bar, so I could do my own stuff there. Right. But with that him facilitating that relationship he did not have to say yes but he did he did not have to check his facebook that day but he did and he gave me a shot he definitely didn't think it overthink it as much as i did um he's just like yeah i'll give you the shot in the arm but that's just the kind of guy he is just, just uh, oh, fuck, humble and generous and that's what i just keep hearing about him yep. like across the board I, that's what I've heard and it's just um, I mean number one like such a fucking shame like that whew, I don't like it I don't oh. like when uh, I, I had a close friend die last year Andrew Vaughn who's yeah, like, yeah. like and it was the same thing I was just like Ugh, no. people stop dying that'd be great can you stop dying be nice uh yeah but yeah no it's oof, we got we got heavy there for we a bit did. but i think we, we both agree like like the work-life balance is so important totally and so do you think that you have a handle on the balance side of things now trying to yeah like yeah. uh this again this these two weeks being away from the fam has been uh it's been tough like just Not I, luck, luckily i've been busy you know it's keeping me distracted from like um you know the heartache of it all that's always the Aww. hardest part of being away um I care more about being a good partner mm -hmm. than I do about being a good comic. And I think that's made me a better comic. Ooh, I love that. I care more about being a good person now, really. Like at the end of the day, because being a good person made me not just better for her, but like better for myself. And that's... You're going to be happier. Yeah. You're going to work harder. You're going to have a clearer head. Just like my priorities changed and suddenly the work, my approach to the work became very different. And that's, um, Hell yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, uh, well, how do, how do you be, how do you be a good partner in your mind? What are the things do you think ha that ha have improved with this one? Um, the things you feel like when you say, I love you, I want to be with you forever. Like those are feelings. Those are words you're using to describe <laughs> your feelings. You actually need to do the stuff. Action. You need action. Your action needs to be in alignment with your intention. <sighs> and if oh, it's damn. not, it's like, I want to be with you. It's like, then why are you not? Like, why are we long distance? Why right. are you in another city? Like, they'd never say that, but like. That is the reason. Why w Why aren't I not there now? Right. And I know it's very cliche to say, why aren't you chasing me down at the airport? But like, if you want to be with them, why aren't you with them? Ding, 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 ding. But this is the thing, right? I think a yeah. lot of people they're not well in themselves enough to demand that action. Yeah, go and for and it. we too often, I think, 
just put so much into potential. This is like such an issue with I think so many yeah. people, men and women both, um, it was, trying to be yeah, happy. It like was, it's it was therapy that oh, got shit. me to get to that point. Like um, Fuck yeah, and it was actually then I I've talked to Diana about this. She knows. Um, they I said there's someone in my life I want to be with, but I don't want to be with them, and I I think I'm scared. And they're like, why don't you want to be with them? It's like, well, I'm scared. Like, she'd want, like, what if we were together and I'd lose her? It's like, you don't even have, like, what do you, do you want to be with her? And I go, well, I don't think she'd want to be with me. That's not what I asked you. Yeah. Do you want to be with them? And so the courage to actually admit, like, that you want. So, you know, manifesting, come back to it, to put it out there and say, let's make this happen. And it did. I mean, it took action. But yeah. you had, before you can really do the action, you really have to want it. Uh, and and not be ashamed of wanting it. Yeah, exactly. Not be ashamed of what you want in life. I'm gonna. Oh, you did it for yourself. Thing for you. But, that was good. But also, like, can I just say, fucking good on you for being in therapy. Like, yeah. That's I, I make jokes all the time just about like how much oh. how like a dude is so much more attractive to me when he's like I've been in therapy. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> I used to work in suicide prevention as well. Wait, what? Yeah. Justin, what? Yeah. I worked on a crisis line. Shut um, up! I, I was their communications person um, for about two years. I worked in their social media. I worked in their community engagement, like helping spread awareness of their, their organization. Was it Kids Health Phone? What's that? Kids Health Phone or no, something? No, another it's, one. A, it's, a, it's a northern Alberta one that okay. helps the, uh, the Wood Buffalo region. Oh, my God. And um, it was very hard. Uh, I got to do... Um, uh, like crisis line training but also like it's called assist i think it's applied skills intervention suicide training of latter-day saints it's a long name uh, <laughs> there's no latter-day saints like no <laughs> it's not affiliate it's not church affiliated right that's a joke <laughs> <laughs> just uh, making a, we're just making a very very clear very, here <laughs> very, very clear joke and uh, it's not something i bring up no this much. is fascinating um, wow I, i've been thinking about that because as i said i I'm, i try to be personal in my work but um it's not something like I, I just haven't figured out the the angle with it yet. The closest thing to a tag or a, even a, a premise is it's hard because people call you and they want your help. And I'm just like, OK, so have you tried talking to anybody about this? I am the somebody about this. Right. That's. Oh, we're here now. That, I have... That's what. Oh, now I'm I... that person. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, so and then you're like, you, you need to be okay and you need to be stable in yourself to be that pillar for that person. Yes, precisely. Which I'm is, I mean, that's always challenging. But like my question to you about that, yeah. how do you feel about, because I feel like there's a lot of people, I talk very openly about mental health and yeah. I've talked very openly on this podcast about suicidal thoughts and yeah. I've, I just feel... Having those conversations is so important, and some people just go, "Oh no, you can't talk about that." Yeah, and like, what are your thoughts on that side of things? Like talking about these dark, yeah, I mean subjects. Like I think it's important, but <laughs> it's dark, it's heavy, but really, I, I try not to put labels or prescribe it as dark or heavy. Like I try Ooh, to good. avoid those labels. I'd rather you just be honest. <sighs> you know, just like tell me how you feel. And I think it's also important for people who are there in, in other people, like friends, like of other people, like if your friend, like if you're noticing like patterns in their behavior is like different, if you're sensing they're a little off, like if like um, I got a, a best friend who um, he goes through some tough times every so often. And sometimes I get the sense when he's um, a little bit distant or not himself and I, I check in because I wonder, is it symptoms of like ideation? Are you like, is he yeah. like um, withdrawing? Is he pulling, pulling himself out or is he just giving him spells, giving himself space to like, kind of like process something and Feel in that something. case respect his space, but just enough to check in and just be like, Hey, like, I'm yeah. here. What's up? And uh, so I think it, it, it's two hand. Like they keep putting all these ads of like, call the line. It's like, well, honestly, if you're not like from, being on the end of the phone, having to listen to people, that is like such a fraction of the people that do pick up the phone and like right. make the call. But it's also on the people around the people who mm -hmm. might be in pain and just being there for them. 
and uh what's been great is we get calls from people it's like i have a f- i think my friend is like the top. oh, and I'm the, like, oh good okay. double down on that you know go for that um because it's hard one thing i will say on the phone is um you have to ask the big question if someone's calling and they're in crisis you have to ask are you feeling suicidal mm-hmm. you have to say that mm-hmm. you can't are you thinking on doing you can't something? tiptoe around us. exactly you got to go for it because hot tip mentioning suicide has never made someone commit suicide right if they're feeling it they'll go yeah i am actually it's like all right let's call the police and then we, and they're there they've already yeah. they're already on the, they've made Get one it. step yeah, oh it's boy. like no, like if they call and they might just be like feeling anxiety. If you say, "Are you feeling suicidal?" Hey, hey, now that you mention it, yeah, I think <laughs> I'm gonna do it. No one warms up to if like if they're in crisis, you know, within thirty seconds. But you have to ask the question, and right. it's that's that was the hardest part of the job. Like I kind of had to like psych myself up. Uh, you should probably put a trigger warning on this episode, yeah. by the way. I, I might, warning. I might do that, but I, yeah. yeah, it's oof, yeah. Oh boy! Look, yeah. figuring out how to talk to someone who you're worried about is its own yeah, its own thing because you're like, I've talked to people, and a lot of times it's they say things that are very <laughs> concerning, and then they'll say things like, "I'm not gonna do it though. I'm just thinking about it," and it's just like, well, that's still. Yeah. That's still very concerning. I think that comes down to the relationship you have with the person and just kind of knowing like what you need to do, like just kind of monitoring their, their behavior, like monitoring, checking in, bring present, checking in, checking in because it might just be, um, a very, very bad day Yep. or not, or, or it might not be. And so if that's the case, what's the harm in checking in? Yep. There's even just being no like, harm in it. Hey, get, get your coat on. We're going for a walk. Oh, my God. C- the, just the the act of getting out of your pit. I call it like the depression pit, your house, yeah. wherever, wherever you're stuck in yourself feeling the things. Yeah, yeah. Getting someone out of that, getting them out in the world for like a 20-minute walk or something yeah. does wonders, I think. I, I, think I truly so think it does. I think yeah. so. Oh, my God. Well, good for you for doing that stuff that's that's character shaping on your end like to, yeah. to do something like that Whew. Yeah, actually kind of now looking back i'm just like yeah the time i left that job was about a year or so before the pandemic so i'm like okay actually maybe that was kind of some of the life-changing things that happened so wow and how did you take so you you use the phrase that the world dumped us yeah um how was how was your lockdown how was your <laughs> 2020 I mean, <laughs> did got you to, got to be with my best friend and my dog uh and i i realized um i was i was ready to marry her and i've known i'd known for a while that i was going to propose that year anyway but um plans change last part of the plan is knowing the plan can change so i don't know it was it was cool we got to hang out it was tough because we had just moved to hamilton so it was like a new city and we doubled down we decided no let's not let's not turn back like let's not go back to Alberta, go to PEI, like, let's, let's stay here and make a go of it. And that's, that's what I'm most proud of. I think for us is that we, we stuck it out. You've, you've settled in your life. How did you propose? I want to know. All right. Cause I, I heard the bet. Yeah. It was hilarious by the way. Yes. But what was the actual proposal? Uh, I'm going to leave with this cause I do have to, I do have to boogie here today. You know, I do got, I got to call my wife. I got, I got Justin comedy. got stuff to do. Got stuff to do. Um, I'll tell you this cause it's a bit of a story. Um, summer 2019 on PEI, my fiance wasn't my fiance yet. Diana, um, she sold her old engagement ring from her previous marriage at a pawn shop that I used to work at and I felt really bad that that was a thing we would do together like uh, I was just like all right let's let's do it and I asked her I was like are you okay and she's like yeah you know it's just I could kind of sense it was just like it's it's a big thing like it's an end of a chapter of uh, of someone's life um, and so it was her last day on the island because she was coming to visit me working on a on a project and um i said what do you what what should we do and she said i don't know and there's a buddy of mine who i knew from the the pawn shop i said if you had one more day on pei where would you go and he said cavendish 
I take her to Cavendish. So we went to Cavendish, went to a little beach shop and found a bunch of these like beach glass rings that were like at the front counter. And she's like looking around. I grabbed a handful of rings from the counter and just started sliding them on her finger to find one that would fit. Just something to put on her hand because she felt like it sucks. That's a hard thing for someone to have to go through. Fuck. Like divorce is a, I know it's so common, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. No. And I didn't propose there, but I got her this cheap ring that I was like, keeping that there for now. I said to myself, like, I'm going to get you like a proper ring in a year. We're going to come back to the island. Like, all in my head, I'm like, we're going to come back. It'd be the beach. The birds sing. Like, it'll be great. Like, do it. I'll propose with like this awesome ring and like the summer beach at PEI. And I got hired at a theater that, um, that summer 2020. Um, and I was excited cause it meant like the plans in motion. I was going to be able to afford the ring too. Um, but then, um, pandemic hit and, uh, I was kicking the gut. Um, it was right around the time I would have proposed like when I was hoping to, it would have been around like August. I was like, and I'm hoping to do it around my birthday. Um, I was trying to work up the nerve to figure out how to ask her. Because I was like trying to introduce it into the conversations of like, okay, like, uh, how do you feel about marriage again? She's like, I don't think I want to get married again. But I would with you. I'm like, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Um, we got invited to go to a lake, uh, Crystal Lake. Uh, we had this like beach house with her, her sister and her, her brother-in-law. And they're like, join us. And I was like, oh, I can propose there. Like, oh, that's all coming to plan. Uh, and I'm like working it out in my head. I remember I was in the bathroom the night I finally brought up marriage. And then I was like, all right, she's into marriage. I can propose at the beach. I just got to run out and find a ring, any ring in the next three days. Uh, I come out of the bathroom and she's lying on the floor with our dog, Phoebe. And the dog's like licking her and they're just playing on the floor. And she just looked so free, just playing. And she's such a put together lady, just like everything has its place. But when she plays with her dog, it's when you see her. Oh. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> I joined them on the floor. I was going to go get a snack in the kitchen. And I'm like, Nutella can wait, which is the, <laughs> the title of this long winded story. I join them on the floor and Phoebe starts licking me and I have this joke that I'm her stepdad and she doesn't know like how to like what the we don't know what our relationship is but she just starts like going to town on me and Diana's like she loves you like I do and she's got her hand on my chest and I see the ring I bought her a year before Stop. on her right hand I'm like take it off took it off ah! proposed with that ring ah! and uh yeah she said Smooth. yes operator but what we what i didn't expect was i didn't take a knee i didn't bow to her Stop we it. lied side by side fuck my life oh my god that's so sweet yeah, but that's what a good relationship is it shouldn't be bowing to si like it should be an equal oh my god that's so so that kind of set the tone of things. Hey, people listening, the bar is now high. Yeah. You don't need fancy schmancy shit. You just need, you need a proposal that's personal to you. Yeah. You single? <laughs> Very. <laughs> hey, get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, don't haven't, get it. Haven't that's... been asked yet. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been asked. A... <laughs> get it. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I love it. Please, get it. Take me. Uh, I've been single for a long time and like I'm just I'm I'm truly accepting that I'm never gonna find like I, I'm just like I need to be happy alone because I need like I need to be happy before I die and I could die well, anytime you, you've got a good heart and you've got good energy and I mean like again Stop it. fucking f goofy fucking nonsense but we've talked about work we talk about manifesting things sometimes you just gotta be patient that's it patient and present Justin I know you gotta shoot soon um Two quick segments, yeah, sure. if Let's we can it. get Let's to them. Sure. Do you have a... So, number one, I can't even picture you being negative because you're such a positive dude. Oh, thanks. But do you have a rant? I need to rant. <laughs> a rant. Oh. 
And um, this can be anything. Yeah, sure. Zoom comedy is actually not that bad. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, oh, but that could also be an unpopular opinion, too. Um, Yeah. So it depends. Oh, I, I have a second unpopular oh, opinion. Oh, perfect. Okay, Zoom uh, comedy. All right, Zoom comedy is actually not that bad because <laughs> guess what? Some open mics are actually really bad and really unhealthy spaces. So comedy shows are actually kind of on the back end of um, – they're on the backs of the producers and the hosts. You can make a good room just like you can make a good real-life room. You can make a good Zoom room. You can encourage the audience to turn up their mic. You can build a video visual component – Nowhere Comedy, the Unknown Comedy Club, run by two yes. different awesome promoters that are putting on great shows with great content. Mike Birbiglia, another great example. A person I got to meet because of Zoom Comedy. No, it's not better than live comedy. It's just different. No one said it's trying to be the same thing. Make it its own thing. Things are allowed to be different. You're, like, you're allowed to like both. I prefer live comedy, but it got me through a tough time. Would I do a free one? That's a different story. Uh, I'm grateful <laughs> grateful for the producers who have booked me on uh, on Zoom shows. Thank you for the experience. Uh, I hope it never takes the priority of a live show, but you know, I'm happy that it was there. So while it was cringy at the time, it wasn't as bad as you think it was. There are bad shows that are on Zoom. There's bad shows in real life. There's also good for both. So, bam! I think. You know what? Your episode 206, I think that was the best rant yet. Hey, thanks. Good Unpo fucking job. Unpopular opinion, though? Yeah, here we go. Don't hate me for this, but it's time for an unpopular opinion. Domino's pizza? Not that bad. <laughs> you just got to know how to order. Uh, I order off the menu. Uh like it's just such a hot take and it's not that it's true the cheesy bra from domino's yeah. i will take over yeah. most food items <laughs> this is just like if, if you're getting a pizza though order extra sauce and it says a lot that you need like more sauce to like smother the uh the kind of like see i go extra cheese I find extra extra cheese on Domino's specifically yeah. really makes it better. If you can, like, I just had a coupon one day. It was like <laughs> five toppings. And I'm like, I don't think I like five things. Uh, pepperoni, cheese, extra cheese. Right? <laughs> extra pepperoni. Yeah. Sauce. Yeah, God yeah, forbid yeah. a vegetable would enter my body. <laughs> I uh, truly, like, I want to write a joke about this, though, about Domino's. Yeah. Where it's like supposed to be the cheap option for pizza but no matter what you order it's always 30 bucks yeah it's like, what the hell <laughs> and then there's like a delivery charge and I'm like, well, that's just it right they, they make it seem like it's like the fast food of pizza but like it, it always ends up being i mean pizza's just expensive to get as a single person yeah like half of me wanting a partner is just i just want someone to eat this other half of this pizza yeah, that yeah. i'm never gonna eat <laughs> i hate it, a, it they call it a family pizza but let's be real let's be real I'll and then people that. are like oh you'll get leftovers i'm like i don't eat leftovers i just don't it's not the same for me it. you gotta eat it all at once oh um, my. So anyway, yeah we gotta go sponsor the podcast domino's sponsor zoom comedy let's go. book me oh. Oh my God, Justin! What a treat this was. Thank this is you. great. You run a great show. Thank you so much for coming on. This like was so lovely. I'm gonna be crying about that proposal for days <laughs> and wanting that kind of relationship. So if you have friends, yeah, yeah, get it. I'm here. Get it. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. No and I want you now to plug all of your amazing stuff, your podcast, where yeah, people sure. can find you, sure. everything. Uh, you can hit me on social media. I'm I'm on it. I don't love it, but you know it's. Kind of part of life. Doesn't now. love it. Does it great. Uh, Wrath of Shaw. Wrath underscore of underscore Shaw. If you type it in, you'll find it. Justin D. Shaw is my website. That's just kind of a, it's just kind of there. I yeah. put show dates on it. I'm um, hitting Charlottetown at the end of the year. I'm recording, uh, recording some comedy, an EP. Uh, hoping to have it out by sometime next summer. So that is so exciting yeah. please follow him and stay up to date with justin because what wildly talented you're going all of the places and i'm just like happy to have met you before you're like thank you on i guess conan isn't a thing anymore i was about to say like i can just see you doing i don't know i, I see hope. great things for you thank you i see great things i'm manifesting hey. great things for you that. uh oh my gosh well thank you so much and you get to end the episode with the Gonna make it a good one even though it's not the camera. We did it! Thank 
you for listening to the Intoxicated Podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast app you use and leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. You can also give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast and check out our video episodes on the Intoxicated YouTube channel. Until next week, feel hard and talk hard. Intoxicated Podcast is hosted and produced by Sarah McClellan, co-produced by Sarah Nicole, and brought to you by the messiness of life.